My first guests this week are some of the key principals behind the restoration in one of New Bedford's most historic spots, the Mariner's Home and Siemens Bethel on Johnny K. Kill. Joining me to talk about the project are Fred Toomey, who was the president of the New Bedford Port Society, and Bruce Oliveira, the assistant treasurer of the Port Society and also the development director. Gentlemen, welcome. Good morning. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Jim. Uh, uh, let's uh, start with uh, Mr. Toomey. Fred, these structures are historic, and they are old. How old is the Bethel and the Mariner's Home? I, I think we've got to take these places for granted sometimes. They've been there so long. Yes, unfortunately, many people have taken it for granted. Uh, the Mariner's Home was actually constructed in 18, 1787, and the Bethel was constructed in 1830. Uh, in 1850, uh, the Mariner's Home was moved because the Roach family donated it to the New Bedford Port Society. It was moved from down on Water Street up to its present location to be affiliated with the Siemens Bethel. And um, so these buildings have been around a long time. We've seen them. We've seen them. Uh, we, we visit them. The Bethel more than the Mariner's Home. But I guess right now you are taking some steps to open up the Mariner's Home to some degree. Uh, a major degree, yes. We've added a connector in the back, a uh, modern post and beam connector, and we've integrated the historic fabric with new construction so that, you know, nothing looks out of place. Uh, we have had major structural issues uh, that needed to be addressed. Uh, to quote the structural engineer, if we hadn't done what we did right now, we would have been looking at a historical pile of wood within five to seven years. And that, of course, is unacceptable. That building is in the so-called historic district, the National Park. Yes, and it is on National Register, too. Yeah. So it is a, a really a piece of history. Um, Bruce Oliveira is the uh, assistant treasurer and the development director. I imagine you had a hand in going after some money for this project, Bruce. Yeah, a little uh, bit. Tell me about uh, that process. Well, it's, it was quite an involved process, and uh, Will was tremendously helpful to us, uh, in getting involved in the grant side of it. Uh, we've brought in funds from the Mass Cultural uh, Society, uh, Mass Cultural Fund, uh, a substantial amount. The uh, uh, city's been very helpful, the mayor and the, and the CDBG department. Uh, we've brought funding in from there. Uh, we also brought in uh, some state historic tax credits, um, some federal historic tax credits, and private contributions. Um, it, it's been a process, but yes. Been a little involved in that. You had a lot of partners. Why is it, uh, you, as Go you ahead. mentioned, why is it important to do this? I mean, this, I'm sure you'll agree, this is a piece of New Bedford history that we can't let go of. Oh, definitely. And, and it's a project, um, it's, it's very much an honor to be part of the project. Uh, it, the Bat Mariner's home is actually the oldest home, as I believe, in the city of New Bedford, or the oldest building, still standing building. And uh, when uh, Fred Fred drove most of the construction side of it, and as we got into the actual construction and saw some of the interior pieces of that building, it's amazing that they were both standing up. And um, uh, there's a tremendous amount of work was done even in the basement of the Bethel, which no one will ever see, but approximately $90,000 of work is done below that floor to support, to, to actually firm up the foundation so that the building could stay up. So, right. yeah, it's, it's been a great project. Fred Toomey, you've been an, an instructor for many, many years at Grady New Bedford Volk Tech. You brought that expertise, I think, to some degree to this project. Tell us what some of the work that's been done, uh, the most impressive uh, parts of this job. I would venture to say the most impressive is, as Bruce had just uh, stated, in the basement of the Bethel itself, uh, when we opened up the floor and started looking at what it was basically a big pile of dust, uh, the building was actually supported on tree stumps as part of the foundation. There was no actual concrete basis. So we had to dig down uh, to the ledge because, as everybody knows, there's a ledge that extends from the north end of New Bedford right down to the south end. Uh, we had to clear all everything out by hand and... Uh, dig it all up. We put uh, compacted sand, 18 inches of gravel, 6 inches of reinforced concrete, 2 by 4s and then marine plywood on top of that. 
and then the original floor was put back on in the same position, the same boarding uh, lineup. That is one of the major uh, things that needed fixing. Uh, we also added, for the first time ever, central heat and air conditioning to the Bethel. Uh, we've upgraded the lighting to all LED lights. Over in the Mariners' home, uh, when we opened that up, uh, it was a total, total surprise. Uh, the beams were in such deplorable shape that uh, the building was basically being held up by a wing and a prayer and the paint chips on the outside. Uh, we had to uh, resurrect and put in all new beams on the front facade of the building in the back corner. All the beams on the second and third floor, uh, the floor joists, which were old, had to be reinforced and sisted up because structurally they were just in such poor shape. We had to add steel uh, plating to all that. Those are the major things. Uh, now we have uh, central, again, central heating and air condition independent on all three floors. Um, so those are the major. We're also, uh, we're also handicap accessible now. Right, with, with an elevator. elevator. And, uh, that's, uh, that's and then, very, Jim, if I could, too, one, sure. one foundation I forgot to mention who, who stepped up early in the project uh, with a substantial donation was the Crapo Fund, um, a local foundation that uh, was tremendously helpful as, as one of the partners. So I didn't want to forget that. No. Um, so you've opened up the Meredith Home now to the public as well now there, there's a correct things you can see there uh the first floor is being rented by the whaling museum we have developed a collaborative agreement with the whaling museum where they now have exhibits on the first floor relative to the maritime history of new bedford uh not only the fishing industry but whaling the roach family and their participation in the whaling industry back in the 1800s uh so that's going to be a collaborative effort and they also working to the salt box where we're going to have educational lectures in conjunction with the National Park Service and the Whaling Museum. Now, initially when this project was first discussed, there was talk of a connector between the museum, between the Mariner's Home and the Siemens Bethel. Is that did that happen? Yes, it did. Yes. Okay. Yes. It, you then can walk from one to the other. We can walk to it or you can get in by elevator. There is an elevator. And I neglected to mention the second floor is now being rented by Whale, Waterfront Historic League, and the New Bedford Preservation Society, uh, renting space there. So we're trying to keep it within the historical context. All right. Do you know what they're going to do with that space? Are there offices there? Or is they are going to have offices on the second floor. Okay. Right? Well, I couldn't think of a better better place than the right. oldest building in New Bedford for those organizations. <laughs> yes. That's for sure. Um, <clears throat> you, do, you do have a grand opening coming up. That is correct. Tell yes. us about that. Uh, well, it's a, it's a. Uh, actually, the governor was supposed to come down on the 19th, but he called at the last minute and had to change his commitment. Yeah. So the governor will be coming down uh, on the May 18th of this this month, and um, he will be touring it. And basically, uh, because of the work that we have done there. Uh, Mass Cultural Council is using our project as a showcase project for the South Coast. And that's primarily why the governor and I believe the lieutenant governor are coming down to showcase how their monies are being spent. So the groundbreaking will happen on the 18th? No, the groundbreak, the official uh, ribbon yeah, cutting ribbon is on the 19th, 19th, 19th. 19th at 10 a.m. in the morning. Uh, the public is invited to tour the place, but uh, the go unfortunately the governor won't be there, but we do have... Uh, Mass Cultural Council, Anita Walker, who will be there, uh, Senator Montigny, uh, Representative Tony Cabral, who will be speaking because that's part of his district. Uh, Mayor Mitchell. Mayor Mitchell will be doing the introductions. Mm -hmm. uh, and we will have an, you know guided tours throughout the project. Uh, but the official ribbon cutting is the 19th of May at 10 a.m. And the governor will visit on the 18th. The governor will come down on the 18th, yes. All right. Um, are you expecting a big summer tourism-wise? I mean, you guys um, uh, are part of, the, as we mentioned, the National Park. A lot of folks uh, are becoming aware of the National Park from outside New Bedford. Uh, I, I, yeah. the, the Bethel has always been a attraction in all its own. Uh, what do you think about this year? Well, uh, we had a soft opening for the Whaling Museum exhibits uh, last week, and we've already increased what we anticipated. We don't normally open up until Memorial Day, but um, we've are, we're averaging right now 
uh, 60 people a day v visiting both the uh, Whaling Museum exhibit and the Bethel, which is something we've never had in the past. Uh, normally, during the course of the year, during our summer months, we had in the vicinity of 20,000 people visit. Uh, looking at the projections from the Whaling Museum and everybody else in the National Park Service, uh, they're anticipating we're going to upgrade that to probably 50 or 60,000. Uh, we do have a number of tourists from out of state and out of country. It's, mm -hmm. it's amazing how many people come in. I, uh, I should have started really right off the top with this question, but what is the historical significance of the Mariner's home? Um, and either of you can jump in on this. Uh, what's the significance, do you think? The, the Mariner's home? Yeah. Uh, it, its initial <laughs> purpose was to serve the seamen, uh, give them a, a place to stay as they came through New Bedford as a port. Uh, we haven't used it uh, to house any residents since, I believe, 2002, 2001. Yeah, 2002 was last year. But that was its initial function in, in, uh, in coordination with the, with the Bethel, as, as best I know yeah. it. Yeah, the ladies' branch of the Port Society, uh, which basically were Quaker women, uh, decided to uh, utilize the house to support seamen. Uh, the second floor basically was set up as probably one of the first medical facilities in the city for the seamen. Uh, they would come in. They couldn't call it a hospital or anything of that nature because they did not have uh, licensed medical staff. But all the Quaker ladies would tend to the needs of injured seamen or sick seamen. And the third floor was used for basically a roomy, as a roomy house. And back in those days, it was 25 cents a night uh, for a cup of coffee and a bed. Uh, when we closed in 2002, we were all the way up to $10 a night for a cup of coffee, a shower, and a bed. <laughs> I don't think we need to uh, expound too long on the historical significance of the Siemens Bethel. But that Siemens Bethel is what Melville really uh, immortalized, I would Correct. say, yes. in Moby Dick. Correct. Um, uh, Reverend Marple's speech is happened at that Bethel, at least in Melville's uh, chapter yes. seven, eight, and nine. Yeah, every year when they do the. Uh, the, the Moby marathon. Dick marathon. Yeah. But um, is is there more to the Bethel that perhaps? Uh, people don't know uh basically i mean the biggest thing there is the cenotaphs on the walls the people they memorialize uh a cenotaph for those of you that don't know what it is is a grave marker without a body uh there are presently 38 cenotaphs on the walls uh from the whaling era into uh present day fishing era where they memorialize all these people that have lost their lives. In addition to that, there are plaques on the walls dedicated to the fishermen that have lost their lives. Unfortunately, this summer we're going to have to be engraving five more names on those plaques of people that have lost their lives in the last two years at sea. Um, those are the major things. Uh, if you look at uh, the Bethel, it has a lot of historic significance uh, because of Moby Dick. Uh, the pulpits there, uh, people are really proud, and they, everybody wants to take a picture at the pulpit. Sure. So uh, that's pretty much sums it up. The educational area downstairs, which was part of the, the Quaker tradition, which was actually a schoolhouse and a library, uh, because the Reverend Mudge, who was portrayed in Moby Dick as the Reverend Muddle, uh, one of his strong beliefs was that uh, he would like to educate all the whalemen because of the fact they were illiterate, he would uh, teach them to write, read and write, so they wouldn't get gypped on their pace, and the fact that they could write their name, and he would send letters back to their families in the villages and countries that uh, they originated from. Mm -hmm. So, And uh, is there some day you may want to see that, some sort of education happening there again? Yes, we are working right now with the Whaling Museum, Sarah Rose, who is the Director of Education, to develop uh, educational tours and uh, training for students in the New Bedford school system and other surrounding towns well, that, that wish that, to come in. We have students from as far away as Boston that come down to yeah. visit. So That's a great idea. 
Gentlemen, thank you very much. My thanks to Fred Toomey, the president of the Siemens Bethel, and uh, um, pardon me, the Port Society of New Bedford, which includes the Siemens Bethel and the Mariner's Home, and Bruce Oliveira, who's the assistant treasurer of the Port Society, also the development director. Gentlemen, you have restored a piece of New Bedford's history, and uh, you're to be congratulated. So good luck with the uh, governor's visit, good luck with the ribbon cutting, and I hope you have a great summer. Hopefully, we, and uh, thank you for having us on. Thank and you. Yeah, thank you very much. Appreciate all right. It. Hopefully, we'll see you at the grand opening. You may. You may very well may. Thank you very much. Stay with us. We'll be right back on Town Square Sunday.